The Philadelphia Phillies had absolutely no business making it to the World Series. They fought for their playoff spot up until the season's final week. They swept the Cardinals, stunned the Braves, beat the Padres, and they did it anyway. In a division with two 100-win teams, their only hope was to ride a wildcard berth into October like a flea on a dragon. And these fleas... <laughs> fleas, fleas, fleas... Rode it all the way to a National League pennant. They made it through three rounds of the playoffs to Game 6 of the World Series with only 87 regular season wins, the fourth lowest win total for a pennant winner in expansion era history. This year was actually the only year in Major League history this Phillies team would have made the playoffs at all, and they still just barely made it. They finished one single game above the Brewers for a playoff spot that didn't even exist a year ago. By all accounts, this team should not have gotten as far as they did. 87 wins is historically low for a pennant winner, but the 2022 Phillies are by no means the worst team that's ever been to a World Series. Though few have been worse, the best among them, the 2006 St. Louis Cardinals. The best worst team to ever win a World Series title. While we're on the topic, did you know there's an age-old custom in Scotland that grants landowners the official title of Laird, meaning Lord or Lady in English? I want to take a second to thank Established Titles, the sponsor of today's video, for providing a service I didn't even know I needed. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. Purchasing a title pack from Established Titles grants you official ownership of at least one square foot of land in Edelston, Scotland, and with it, the official title of Lord or Lady and the beautiful plaque to boot. Established Titles offers you the choice between a Lord or Lady pack that comes with a single plot of land and a couples pack that comes with adjoining plots of land. I was able to give my own special someone the one-of-a-kind gift she deserved. And this is how that went. Do you know anything about Scottish law? Who official signed license. This? What? Who signed this? I, the King of Scotland? I don't know. But so now I'm a Lord and I figured I cannot be a Lord if you're not a lady. So, that is literally so sweet. So I just changed your name in case you were, in case you were curious about what, what this means. <laughs> Working with one tree planted and trees for the future, established titles plants one tree with every title pack purchase to support global reforestation efforts. Not only does buying a title pack instantly turn you into the coolest person you know, it helps support the planet in the process. And for the record, this is as official as it gets. You can actually change your name on your credit cards, your plane tickets, or any official documentation that allows for a prefix. The first 200 people to purchase a title pack using my link below will have their plots of land within walking distance of mine. Whether for a birthday, an upcoming holiday, or just because, this makes for an amazing last minute gift. Established Titles is already running a Black Friday sale, plus, if you use the code SRS, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash SRS to get your gifts now and help support the channel. A genuine thank you to Established Titles for sponsoring today's video. Lord Matt, signing off. For most of my life, I've viewed the 2006 Cardinals as some kind of unstoppable force. They were responsible for one of the worst moments of my sports fandom, and up until a few days ago, I would have guessed they would have won 100 games easy. But just the other day, I find out that for years, I've had nightmares about a team with 83 regular season wins. And I don't really know if that helps. I think it does. The 2006 St. Louis Cardinals won just 83 games. The NL Central champs finished a mere 5 games over 500 and just barely snuck into the playoffs. They almost blew their division to the Astros. This team did not deserve to be in the playoffs. They started strong, 34-20 and 20 in April and May, but then they fell off. This team was 13 games under 500 on the road. They finished 22-27 and 27 in one-run games. They won more games than they lost against only 7 of their 19 opponents for the season. They were not good during the regular season, and they weren't even hot going into the playoffs. They were 35-39 and 39 in the second half, they had a 13-15 and 15 August, and a 12-16 and 16 September. They actually lost 17 of their last 29, and 10 of their last 13. Very few signs of life on this team heading into October, and even fewer expectations going into the division series against the Padres. I'm sure they were just happy to be there. Yes! Hell yeah! Hey, come on, baby! Come on! Yes! Come on! Ah! Hey, Editor Matt here. I forgot to ask you guys something. I was thinking, I have a lot of video ideas that revolve around really great playoff moments, which made me wonder, what's your favorite playoff moment, series, anything playoff related? Let me know below. We'd love to know. Also, Mike legally requires that I ask you to subscribe, so if you feel like multitasking for me while you're down there, I'd really appreciate it. All right.
St. Louis was 2-4 against the Padres for the year, and they had just lost 2-3 of three to them at home a week prior. The Padres were just the better team. The Cardinals had a pretty average offense, no solidified starters past defending Cy Young winner Chris Carpenter. Their third best pitcher was some rookie named Adam Wainwright, who acted as a fill-in closer that postseason. A rookie pitcher closing games in October sure sounds like a fun time to me. This team was simply not built to win a playoff series. Imagine being the team that lost a series to them. SD's back. Both reigning Cy Young Carpenter and reigning MVP Albert Pujols carried the Cardinals to a Game 1 victory in San Diego against Jake Peavy. They were off to a good start, but the rest of the series still looked bleak with no solid options behind Carpenter. In Game 2, Tony La Russa sent out a starter with an ERA in his second half with St. Louis, a full run lower than his ERA in the first half with another team. Sounds like a pretty decent option. What? It's just an ordinary- OH MY GOODNESS! In three previous career playoff appearances, Jeff Weaver had given up nine runs in eight and a third innings, most famously a 12th inning walk-off homer to Alex Gonzalez in the 2003 World Series. Just like the Cardinals, 29-year-old right-hander Jeff Weaver was not built for this postseason nor this matchup. And just like the Cardinals, Weaver succeeded anyway. He allowed two hits and five shutout innings in Game 2. Pujols drove in the winning run for a second straight game, and the Cardinals, on the back of some Jared Weaver lookalike, were a win away from advancing. Hold on a second. After dropping Game 3 at Bush Stadium, Chris Carpenter threw seven solid innings in Game 4 to secure an improbable series win for the Cardinals. They won 83 regular season games, they almost blew the division, they barely won the division. They could have stopped here, and they still would have been overperforming in the playoffs. But... Unfortunately, for 15 years worth of my mental health, they weren't done there. The Padres were another sub-90 win team. St. Louis winning was definitely unexpected, but it wasn't unthinkable. The unthinkable was yet to come. Enter the 2006 New York Mets, the best team in the National League, if not the entire sport. I'm going to save this series for its own video in the future, so I'll keep it brief in this one. This 2006 Mets team was one of the best they've ever had. A loss against anyone in the playoffs would have been an upset. Losing to an 83-win Cardinals team would have been one of the greatest upsets in Major League history. Yeah, this was one of the most memorable playoff series ever. Yeah, it featured two of the most memorable moments in Mets franchise history. But how about our boy Jeff Weaver? He gets the game one start, he gives up two runs in five and two thirds, this guy's crazy, then comes back for game five, shoves for six more innings, gives up two roar runs, and gets the win. Best part? One strikeout per start. New favorite player, no notes. The series was back and forth, so much so that it wasn't decided until the ninth inning of game seven. The Cardinals scored two in the ninth on a Molina homer and clinched the National League pennant on the road. Remember that Adam Wainwright guy? Rookie reliever turned closer, asked to finish games on baseball's biggest stage in his first season. He clinched the pennant by striking out NL MVP candidate Carlos Beltran on three pitches. The Cardinals stunned the Mets in one of the biggest upsets in the history of history, and their one series went away from doing the unthinkable. And now on to the World Series in Detroit. <laughs> this one, this one cracked me up. This was a quote from a USA Today writer I won't name yet. This came on the eve of the World Series. He wrote, quote, the Detroit Tigers' biggest obstacle to a championship will be keeping a straight face, Tigers in three. If you pay attention to baseball on social media, you'll know the answer. I will give you one guess. Who wrote this 16 years ago? The St. Louis Cardinals upset the Padres, they upset the Mets, and they upset the Tigers in only five games, as many games as they finished above 500 during the regular season. With Cardinals rookie right-hander Adam Wainwright getting the final out in a game lost by Tigers rookie right-hander Justin Verlander. Fun fact to break up the drama, Verlander allowed one earned run in that Game 5 loss, which was actually the only time he had ever allowed one earned run or fewer in his World Series career up until just one week ago, which I thought was pretty cool. But guess who threw an eight inning, one earned run, World Series clinching gem with nine strikeouts. Jeff motherf- Everywhere I go, I see his face. So the Cardinals did the unthinkable. 
They turned a barely decent 83-78 and 78 season into three playoff upsets and their National League leading 10th World Series title. So did the 2006 Cardinals deserve to win the World Series, and were they even good? I think you'll see these questions a lot more over the next 50 years as the league expands, access to the postseason expands, and you have more of these 2022 Phillies, 2006 Cardinals type mid-80 win teams making the playoffs and winning it all. And for the record, pun intended, their win totals may have been close, but the 2022 Phillies were a significantly better team than the 2006 Cardinals. Just look at the two divisions these teams played in, they just don't compare. If I had to give the simple answer, I'd say the 2006 Cardinals were not a great team, but they did deserve to win the World Series. I think the answer comes down to how you view the functions of both the regular and postseasons. To those that complain about the new playoff format, how it needs to be changed because a bunch of 100 plus win teams get knocked out early, to your credit, I think there is a more optimal playoff format to ensure that teams that might tie for first place with 100 plus wins aren't getting thrown into a best of three. You were that amazing in the regular season, you should be rewarded for it. For the sake of transparency, I am a fan of one of these teams, but at the same time, the most fundamental aspect of sports is winning. Sports are games, you play to win them, to win them all, you just have to win, no matter where you play or what time of year. If you're a deserving World Series winner, you need to be able to beat anyone else when it counts most. It doesn't matter how many games you won from April through September, the time's only to best prepare yourself for the games you need to win in October. The Dodgers are a powerhouse in the regular season, one of the most dominant teams ever the last bunch of years. The 2022 Dodgers are a way better team than the 2022 Phillies, but I think 100 years from now, the 87-win Phillies are going to be remembered way better than the 111-win Dodgers will. I think the definition of a great team and what makes a team deserving of a World Series title are both a lot harder to answer than they used to be. And I think that'll only continue to get harder in the future. There were 12 teams in 2006 with better records than the Cardinals. The 2006 World Series champions were the 13th best team in baseball by record during the regular season. Before Game 1 of that postseason, most fans would have probably told you that that team was not very good. But they won the World Series. I did not like the 2006 Cardinals, I did not like the 2022 Phillies during the regular season, but they are both amazing reminders of why I love this sport so damn much. Oh. Remember rookie Adam Wainwright? Nine and two-thirds innings, two walks, 15 strikeouts, four saves, and zero runs allowed in the playoffs as a rookie first-time closer, which is pretty crazy. I think he's probably due for his own spin-off video, too. Gonna turn SRS into Disney Plus pretty soon. Now, would you have swiped right on me on Hinge had I had the word Lord next to my name? Lord Mac. No. <laughs> You gotta say yes. We're not gonna be honest? Nope. We're kidding, yeah, that would have been major <laughs> for me.